mean, you, you, you're sort of talking about miraculous events, like the resurrection or miracles. I mean, I, I would be more convinced by sort of... Uh, well, I don't know, really, because, I mean... The, it's hard to define morality. The Muslims were trying to tell me that uh, apparently no one can produce a verse of the Quran that's as good as, the, as a verse of the Quran, which sounds a bit silly to me. Okay, just a moment. Guys, 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 uh, you're, you're good and loud and everything, but could you just slightly, slightly, thanks a lot, thanks a lot. <laughs> it's just getting in my ears and I couldn't... <laughs> Um, so yes, the, the, you can't produce a verse of the Quran like it, and yeah, couldn't it, produce, a, produce a verse that's like a verse of the Quran. Yeah, they call, I think they call it the miracle of inimitability. Or something. You can't okay. imitate them, which, ah. which I thought is a bit because uh, I'm sure someone's produced verses of poetry in Arabic that sound like the Quran. And when I put that to them, and I said to them, well, the person who's judging it is going to be a Muslim, so obviously he's not going to say, well, that sounds a bit like the Quran. And he's got to be an Arab Muslim as well, yeah. or a person who's fluent in Arabic. Yeah, so, it, so, I mean, I, so the field is narrow. And they said there's no contradictions to the Quran, which I mean, I think there's contradictions in every holy book, including the Bible, including uh, uh, you know, any, any book. So, uh, well, let's look at those two, two issues. It's pity a Muslim's not round here at the moment, but no doubt they'll appear another day and we'll end up going through this um, okay. man to man, face to face, yeah, are those toe the to toe. They've used with you, yes, by the way. yes, yes. The same two. Oh, arguments. yes, yes. Okay. Now take the uh, inimitability argument. Well, there's a there's a a. a oh, sorry, there was another. Sorry to interrupt. That's you. right. There was another one. They said uh, there was a fellow called Abu something in the Quran, and it, it, it's prophesied in the Quran that he would never convert to Islam. And uh, as it turns out, he didn't convert to Islam. And <laughs> so they say that's proof that uh, he he was sort of against the prophet or something. And and I thought to myself, well, that's, that's a bit silly, isn't it? Because it's like. Um, Self-referential? Self well, I'd call it, if everybody used that as a proof, every religion would be true. I mean, to, to prophesy somebody won't convert, yes. and then they don't convert, yes. and that's, a, that's an accurate prophecy. My God, I tell you, if I had a penny for every time I could do that kind of prophecy, I'd be a rich man. Yeah. Anyway, it's back to inimitability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a bit crazy, but inimitability, there's a, there's a, a fluent Arabic speaker um, called Ali Dashti. He wrote a book called 13 Days. I've got that. And he in there says the Quran is full of grammatical errors, it's, um, it's, it's stylistically problematic, and it really isn't what the Muslims claim in terms of beauty. That's just one guy. But I think the problem is, we are looking at something, uh, you've basically said it, subjective analysis is not really a way of moving forward to establish whether something is true or not. Yeah. What you find beautiful, I might not find beautiful. For example, when Muslims um, recite the Quran, some of them get really emotional about it, but it moves me not at all, because I've been brought up on the Beatles and the Rolling Stones. My brain was wired musically differently. So I could find that stuff beautiful if I was raised in that. Even if I'd stayed a complete Roman Catholic, I might have loved the Muezzin call. It's just, it's just kind of like, um, psychological stuff this yeah, it is. doesn't prove anything so beauty is a problem we have to get to put to one side and we can't really use it as probative of anything I don't know why I didn't take them up on that more I should have done <laughs> I was just listening to them especially when it's a key and um, probative point they try to use yeah. to show the Quran to be to be valid um, and um, and the other one was um, the uh, the lack of contradictions in the Quran well, you know, I mean, one can say that, but... Um, I'm sure you can pick out a, 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 a dozen of them. You can pick up many. The, the, the different accounts of the creation of the, of the world, um, they, the, the, the numbers of days and the order in which things are created, it's well known that they are out of order um, in, in that respect. And the, uh, where, where, the, where the baby comes from, the, 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 where the male sperm comes from, the backbone, I mean, it doesn't look cool. You know? um, not in any animal, uh, not any mammal. Uh, and there's something about the sun setting. Never mind men. Yeah. Uh, and in, in chapter 218, I 86, the sun sets in a... a pool of muddy water. Yeah. Now, I don't know about you. I mean, when you look at the sun, it looks like a, like a 10 pence disc, right? Yeah. Size. But we're apparently told it's not that size. It's very, very big and very, very far away. Now, of course, the scientists could be wrong. I was, I was reading some Muslim interacting with somebody about this, and he did in the end say, well, you know, science could be wrong. Yeah. 
But I mean, I think what they were thinking of is maybe the sun setting, and it, in a desert you would maybe see a sort of a mirage, and it would look like it was setting in a pool of okay. muddy water, perhaps. Now, to the casual observer. Yeah. Now, we have to put mirage to one side because a mirage is a mirage; it's not actually a body of water. So one would look at a um, a a pool of water. One cannot see the sun setting in it, and um, because visually it's just not possible to what you could do when you look at the ocean because it's so big or the sea it, if it goes across the horizon and the sun comes down from your vantage point the sun could be setting in the sea or the ocean but that's not a muddy spring that's the sea or the ocean and of course it then set, and this is Allah saying this happens so what we have I think is Allah or rather the writer who's presenting us Allah thinks really the sun is a small disk in the sky not very far away that sets you might not see the muddy spring in which it sets but it's small enough to set in one and so it naturally you logically deduce from your observations that it sets somewhere it's either going to set flat on the ground somewhere over that way or it's going to set in water and if it's the size of a 10 pence piece it could yeah. probably fit in one of the poles here <laughs> well you probably you probably wouldn't say it would set in the ground because then it's wedged in the ground. Yeah. So how's it going to rise again or whatever? I, but but you know if it, if you got if you're smart, you'll say it sets in water, and it doesn't have to be a very big body of water because you're observing as a, as an eight, a seventh century Arab. Now, given that the sun is 93 million miles away, is vastly bigger than the Earth. They didn't know that back then. Though. <laughs> no, and to our benefit, they didn't know it. Yeah. And to our benefit, I think God allows these things to go in false books so that we can see it cannot be true. Um, and that's one of the absurdities of that text.